have 11 currently. I'm not sure what you see. I just see the 3 of us. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. see any attendees. I don't if there are questions. Is there a, I don't know. Is, is there like a. Um, yeah, all I see is just the 3, uh, 3 okay. images and that's it. I uh, see the chat, so I'll make sure that I keep an eye on the chat. Okay. Do you see? Yeah, we're up to 14, than... so I think people will keep trickling in. Okay, um, maybe she's going to say good morning. Too. So, good morning, Krista and Greg and Thomas. Yeah, good. Okay, so um, let's let us kick off. So, I just started the recording. Um, and so, welcome everyone. I'm Kelly Carpenter from Lakeshore Technical College, and I'm here um, as the host of this session with Kim Ernstmeyer from Chippewa Valley Technical College and with Delmar uh, Larson from Libertex and also um, University of California or UC Davis. And their presentation is on using ADAPT to create and remix OER and CLEX next generation style case studies and questions. And so the, this Wisconsin Open Education Symposium has the code of conduct um, currently in effect during this session. And we just ask the participants take a moment to reflect on how our actions can build up our open education community and support diverse voices. So, like I said, the session is being recorded. We will uh, capture everything for future viewing. But thanks for joining us today, and we'll kick it off to Kim and Delmar. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I'm going to be doing the first one third of this presentation, um, and then Kim will uh, take on. Uh, the rest. Uh, so it's a pleasure to virtually be here. Uh, I know I'm sort of an outsider from California, um, but it's always a pleasure in order to talk about what we're doing uh, to people who are interested. So uh, let's begin by figuring out how to move forward. Uh, you know, there are a variety of reasons why people pursue OER, and uh, I like to emphasize this uh, from time to time in order to make sure that it's clear what the actual goals are that we, LibreText, and I think the greater uh, OER community uh, is involved in. So we're ultimately trying to remove the financial burden of forcing students to pay significantly for required educational resources. Um, and we feel that that's the first step in terms of bridging the equity gap, um, obviously bridging the income gap, uh, but there are lots of other uh, correlated inequalities connected to that. And, and that's the guiding principle behind how uh, we view what we're doing uh, in the community. Uh, uh, and then OER obviously, uh, provides the opportunity for funds to be freed for students in order to be better spent um, than to commercial publishers. Um, but OER also provides the opportunity for customization of uh, resources, whether the textbook homework uh, to address student and class identities. Uh, and those are the two key components I like to remind people about what OER brings to the table um, and such. So the, the LibreText project is not able to go backwards. Okay, well, I'm not mastering uh, <laughs> the Google the slides here. Uh, the, the LibreText project is a 15 year old project uh, that was born out of University of California Davis. Um, it's now partially uh, operating out of a not for profit uh, entity off campus. Um, and the goal of that is to be able to generate an infrastructure in order to take the place of commercial publishers. And uh, over the last 15 years, we've gotten quite uh, big and popular. We deliver somewhere on the order of 900,000 page views uh, of our libraries uh, alone per day, uh, somewhere on the order of 1.1 billion with the B page views uh, since we started in 2015. But we knew that we needed to complement those textbooks with the homework infrastructure. The issue that we have is that homework is considerably more complicated from a technological perspective than textbooks or hosting of textbooks and content. And it took us a long time in order to be able to address that. We're very happy in order to be um, releasing ADAPT, which is our homework infrastructure that was funded primarily through the state of California, although it was also funded with uh, some funds from the U.S. Department of Education, the uh, Open Textbook Pilot uh, Award that we received close to five years ago. Um, uh, and it's available for uh, individuals uh, to use and capitalize uh, in a variety of different ways. Uh, so right now, the ADAPT homework system, uh, again, is freely available to all fair, uh, verified instructors in order to uh, utilize it as a question bank. Uh, 
Uh, right now we have 190,000 questions. Uh, it's growing quite rapidly uh, for a variety of different reasons. One in part is because it's a comprehensive infrastructure that things can contribute to it uh, and people can uh, uh, access it. So if you're a faculty member, <clears throat> I don't know any faculty member that doesn't want to have access to a large corpus of free questions in order to tap into. But uh, if you are interested, please uh, take a look at the website, which is available. It was on the front screen. It's at adapt.libretext.org, uh, and I'll paste it in the chat when I get access to the chat uh, momentarily. Uh, the uh, the homework infrastructure uh, or using adapt as a homework infrastructure where you have the technology in order to keep track of a students such as uh, free to the faculty and students in the state of California. That's because the state has invested uh, over $5 million in the construction of ADAPT uh, and using it outside of California, like in Wisconsin, uh, is super cheap. Uh, and how cheap is somewhere between 10 to $15 per student maximum, uh, $30 per year. Uh, the intent is to operate at cost because that's our driving principle, not profit. So uh, that's just laying down the groundwork uh, that people may ask off of here. So ADAPT is designed uh, to be quite flexible. The infrastructure uh, facilitates both auto-grade questioning and open-ended questioning where auto-grade uses a computer in order to evaluate the submissions of the student and then uh, enters that into the grade book and that uh, may or may not be processed back to the learning management system. Open-ended uh, questioning types uh, are types that require a human in order to be able to evaluate it because there are just some questions that auto-grade capabilities are not available right now and who knows how chat GPT or other AI technologies are going to address that in the near future. When I teach my upper divisional uh, chemistry classes, like my quantum mechanics classes, uh, or even my graduate level classes, a lot of my questions are open-ended because I need to be able to see the thinking behind that and just simple submissions uh, from the auto grade is not available. Irrespective of that, <clears throat> each of the open-ended categories or the auto grade categories has a series of categories associated with how they operate. <laughs> the auto grade uh, technologies, uh, rely on four principal technologies that we uh, we work with. We've integrated web work, uh, which is a math based infrastructure uh, out of uh, University of Rochester um, made close to 30 years ago has expanded greatly since then. Uh, and we brought in the corpus of questions uh, in order to address that for algorithmic and uh, auto grade capabilities. We introduced IMATH-AS. IMATH-AS is the technology that underlies MyOpenMath. Uh, it also underlies a uh, Lumen Ohm system, which is a commercial system, um, and it can run those questions. And if you have question banks in either of these two technologies, they can work and adapt. Uh, we have uh, what we call, uh, let me skip over Native for a second here, we have H5P. So we have our own repository of H5P assessments, which is a more graphical uh, interface that's available on a secondary part of ADAPT called Studio. Uh, and it gives the ability in order to uh, make very simple uh, assessments that can be used summatively in ADAPT. You can also use these and any of the other questions uh, that I mentioned here, both autograded and open-ended and embed them into textbooks, um, specifically Libre textbooks. Uh, however, you can embed it to other technologies if you decide you want to do that. And lastly, <clears throat> native is a technology that we have control over and that we run that uh, typically involves what's called QTI, which is question test interoperability. If you're not familiar with that acronym, um, that's fine. That's the technology or the protocol that underlies learning management systems. So if you have a question bank in uh, Canvas or some other learning management system, we can integrate it into ADAPT as, again, a central corpus that you can pull from and use constructively. Um, and that's gonna be what we've expanded uh, last year with uh, the open RN um, and the next gen RN uh, uh, enterprises uh, in order to address nursing, which Kim is gonna be able to address in far more detail than I'm able to do. Uh, so the, the key benefit off of this is that we don't use a single technology uh, in order to address all different fields because there is no single technology that addresses all fields. By building an infrastructure that's flexible with multiple technologies gives us the ability in order to build an infrastructure that is able to grow and develop uh, into what we want, which is a comprehensive infrastructure to support OER. The open-ended questions are relatively straightforward. Students can submit rich text directly on a um, page. They can also submit audio. This was useful for foreign languages or languages as a second language and even for music classes, uh, or they can submit files for review, including PDFs, Excel, screenshots, and things like that. Um, 
So the, the intent of that, again, is to be able to generate infrastructure that can be used for any class anywhere. Uh, ADAPT is built for multimodal use from an application perspective. Students can use ADAPT uh, directly through the ADAPT website, again, at adapt.libertex.org. Uh, and that right there is about 50% of the traffic that uh, uses ADAPT currently. You can embed any of the ADAPT questions into a textbook, either formatively or summatively. Summatively requires signing in because um, that's how some of it operates, uh, but it essentially converts the textbook into a homework system. And so there are many faculty that use um, ADAPT within their textbook and students never even know that ADAPT exists. Um, and there's uh, there's no real evidence in order to argue that that is a superior way in order to deliver questions than a direct. However, uh, <clears throat> from an intuitive perspective, uh, anything that engages students with the material, with the textbook, uh, is likely to improve learning. Um, we will be releasing an in-class personal response system, aka a clicker uh, mobile app uh, in the next month and a half to two months by the end of this year, uh, and it allows students in order to interact with uh, ADAPT through their phones, um, which about 50% uh, of our traffic to our textbooks are through phones, so students find that as a native technology for interacting with the OER. But this also uh, dovetails the technology in order to being a in-class personal response system where uh, you can use this to pull your students. So in other words, it, ADAPT doesn't just take the place of a homework infrastructure and $40 per student per semester, but it provides opportunity to take the place of iClicker or some other uh, polling infrastructure, again, at $40 per student per quarter. Um, and that's a free benefit that comes off of that. Lastly, all of these modalities can be, uh, more, more specifically, the student submissions of all these modalities uh, and scores can be passed back to learning management system, either through LTI uh, or through the API infrastructure of the learning management system. Uh, and Canvas is the newest one that we've introduced the API. Uh, Lastly, ADAPT is built for multimodal use from a delivery perspective. We can uh, handle questions uh, in a more traditional sense where we give students uh, an, a course that they enroll in and we have a series of assignments in that course and we have a series of questions in those <laughs> assignments. They're open at a certain time, closed at a certain time, and it's a more traditional way from LMS perspective of how we actually address that. But ADAPT is called ADAPT because it has some uh, simple adaptive learning capabilities uh, whereby students interactions with adapt will change based on the nature of the student now we don't have a big black box uh, algorithm based infrastructure for that we follow a decision tree based approach or what we refer to as learning trees whereby instead of giving a student a single question we give them a question and then a series of nodes in a uh, tree or a topology behind those questions that can act as a virtual tutor in order to guide the students in order to address the different skills necessary in order to advance that uh, the key point is that this provides the opportunity for students to engage or have a better engagement with the material, which typically results in increased learning, um, but it also facilitates in the way that we do it, uh, uh, better metacognition capabilities, uh, self-efficacy based approaches. Um, and there's plenty of evidence to argue that this approach uh, by giving a series of learning trees instead of a series of questions is superior, far superior than just a single uh, question. And that's available right now uh, within our infrastructure. And we've built somewhere on the order of about 150 or 170 of these learning trees in general chemistry. And we're going to be greatly expanding them in other fields. So I mentioned this briefly. The studio is our repository for H5P. Well, we kept it centralized because centralization is actually a superior way in order to be able to maintain uh, assessments rather than having them compartmentalized in books like other technologies that are out there. <clears throat> this is freely available for anyone to tap into at studio.libertext.org. I encourage you to do that. If you want to be able to um, uh, construct H5P and use this as a mechanism to distribute it, please contact us and we can give you a uh, details on how to access it. Um, and lastly, I'll show a picture of what uh, an H5P infrastructure from the studio when it's embedded into a textbook. This is an introductory nutrition book um, uh, that uh, introduces uh, the uh, H5P block directly into the book uh, for use. This right here, again, could be used summatively or formatively, depending upon what the instructor has. This is uh, an extra slide. And with that, I will transition off uh, to Kim, who will be able to talk in more detail about the nursing expansion of ADAPT than I can. So with that, I will hand it off to Kim. Thank you, Delmar. So uh, 
I wanted Delmar to go first so that everyone in the audience kind of had an idea of how ADAPT can be used for far more than nursing. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how it, we uh, customized it for nursing, but as you can tell from what Delmar shared, that this can be used for any discipline. So um, the next 15 minutes or so, I'll be sharing how uh, we worked with uh, programmers with an, an ADAPT to customize the ADAPT platform specifically to create uh, next generation style questions that students see on the on the NCLEX. And this all started a few years ago. I watched a similar presentation um, that Delmar had, and we were in the process of creating this next generation grant, um, which is a core industry grant from the Wisconsin Technical College System. And we originally were going to create the software platform for these next gen style questions, and that kind of fell through. And I thought, what a great opportunity to collaborate with uh, what Delmar is doing and, and uh, adapt and, and customize that platform. And it's turned out just uh, wonderfully. So I'm going to share some um, examples here as we talk through. And then at the end of my 15 minutes, we'll open it up for questions to the audience. So um, for those of you that aren't nursing instructors, the, the NCLEX is the national licensure exam that um, nursing graduates have to take to get their nursing license. And in April 2023, they released a brand new um, next generation style NCLEX. Um, so part of what was released were these case studies. Um, so every student gets at least three case studies. Uh, each case study has six questions and those six questions um, have these next generation style question types. So not only, you know, it used to be multiple choice, um, select all that apply and some of the um, different style alternative questions, they, they released a whole new set. and. Uh, a lot of nursing instructors, and including myself, are thinking, how can we get um, these questions out there for students to practice as they're learning the content and then be able to, you know, um, use that knowledge when they're taking their na national licensure exam so they're familiar with this. So that's what we did um, with ADAPT was create these style questions. So um, the deliverables for the grant was to create 20 of these next generation style case studies. Um, including bow ties and trend items. I'm thrilled to say we're already up to over 29 case studies that faculty from across the Wisconsin Technical College System have helped create. Um, and we're also working, uh, as Delmar explained, you can link to these style questions directly out of textbooks. So as a separate project, we're also creating these style questions and linking them out of the, the open RN textbook. So I'll talk more about that um, as we go along. So Delmar, you can go to the next slide. Um, so for these case studies, um, to mimic the NCLEX style case studies, um, students get what basically looks like a, an electronic health record system with different tabs. Um, the different tabs contain things like patient information, history and physical, progress notes, vital signs, lab and diagnostic results, provider orders. Uh, medication administration records and handoff reports. That's what we've seen and what they've released uh, in terms of sample questions. You know, it's very high, highly confidential what students actually see, but this is what they've shared with us at the different NCLEX conferences and some of the sample packs. So uh, ADAPT was customized so that faculty have limited amount of flexibility in terms of what types of, of these tabs they'd like to include in their text, in their um, case studies, and then also a, a unfolding case study type approach, which I'll talk here in a second. So that's on the left side of the screen. I'll show you that in a second. And then students get six of these next generation style questions per case study. Now in the questions that we're creating uh, for next gen project in OpenRN, we're creating these as formative assessments, meaning that we're giving feedback immediately to students in terms of what's correct and what's incorrect. Now, faculty can determine whether that is used um, as, a, as a summative type assessment, meaning there's gradebook passback that goes into their LMS, or they can just use it as a, a you know, activity that they do um, prior to class or during class. So if we go to the next slide, you can see what um, a case study looks like. Now, we have limited real estate is what the programmer calls it on a screen. So we have to squeeze all this into a screen. So on the left side, to mimic what they would see on the NCLEX, you can see those tabs that we talked about. So patient information, progress notes, et cetera. On the right side is the actual question. And then up at the top, you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the different questions that they'll get 
um, associated with this case study. Now to expand this, because um, it's hard to see, um, you can click on those little square boxes with the arrows. So let's pretend we're clicking on that left arrow. If we go to the next slide, um, we can see uh, what they see. So now this is the tab data that's spread out a little bit more. And now we're specifically looking at nurses notes, which is one of the tabs, one of the progress um, notes tabs. Now to mimic uh, the uh, NCLEX, there'll be time. So that's where you see the 1030 or the 1130 and what the nurse's note is. At any point um, when students are going through these six questions, they'll have access to these tabs. And that's part of what they need to learn, right? Is where do I find the information that I need to have in order to answer the questions? Now, if we go to the next slide, we can see what um, the right side of the screen looks like when they click on that box and expand it. So this is an example of um, a drop down style question where they have to read the um, question and answer what are the three top three nursing priority concerns. So by clicking on each drop down box, they'll get several possible answers and then um, the feedback. So if we go to the next slide, what we've also done is uh, mimic how these questions are scored on the NCLEX. And the NCSBN is very transparent about how they score these. Um, for those of the nursing instructors in the audience, you remember before uh, the next generation, everything was um, all or nothing um, style credit. Now with the next generation style um, questions, they're giving partial credit. So it's very detailed behind the scenes um, how this works. But when a student submits an answer, which, so this is an example of more of a matrix style question where they have to uh, read information about what happened um, with the patient under progress notes, and then they have to determine, okay, is the patient improving? Is there no change or are they worsening in these different um, body system or, or vital signs? So they have to click for each row, they have to click on, is the patient improving? No change or worsening. So this is an example where they've clicked on their answers and hit um, submit. The little green check marks are the correctly selected correct answers. And then the red check marks are the incorrect answers. Um, so that's what they see. If what we've decided for many of our questions, if they get an incorrect answer, we don't give the answer right away. We'll say um, incorrect, try again. So they can try again with this feedback and go through, but that's completely uh, customizable according to what faculty wants to do. They may not decide not to include that. And that's one nice thing about ADAPT is faculty have complete control um, over how they want to present this to students, um, how many times they get to try again, uh, how the points are assigned, all that is completely up to the faculty. So if you go to the next slide, um, here's an example of more of a select all that apply type question. So again, you can see the green check marks are the correctly selected answers and the correctly correct not selected answers. So they correct they correctly did not select the incorrect answers, if that makes sense. Um, and then you can see at the bottom under feedback for this one, since they did get the correct answer, they get it, uh, hyperlinks within the feedback section that goes back to the open RN textbooks. So if they perhaps got it right, but they don't quite understand, some, you know, or might be a little gray and fuzzy yet, some of why the right answers are right, they can go back and review that section uh, in the OR textbook. So that's an example of the scoring. If we go to the next slide, this is just a quick, um, you know, there's a lot more training that goes into creating these style case studies. But if a faculty member, um, as they create a case study, they say, OK, I want to have um, these specific tabs in my case study notes. This is how they select with this drop down box. Um, these are the options that they have for what tabs that they want. Um, and then they can enter that information. Like I said, they can have uh, the times of the progress notes or if we go to the next slide, they can have an unfolding case study. So um, they can select which note they want the student to see for which question. So maybe with the first question, there's just an initial admission note. And then as the case study unfolds, additional information is provided, just like what happens in practice. And that obviously might change the, what the correct answer is. So that's an example of how you can make an unfolding case study and adapt. So if you go to the next slide, these are all the different style next generation um, questions that have been created 
could in adapt to mimic the, mimic the NCLEX. So every type of question that students uh, might be able to see on the NCLEX are represented in adapt. Faculty can choose to create them. Um, information about these style questions are you know, fully transparent um, provided by the NCSBN. So faculty go out to the NCSBN newsletters. They can read more information about this. If they've gone to uh, the NCLEX conferences that we funded through the grant, a lot of um, faculty to go to that every year in September, they can learn more about it that way. Um, we've also, uh, within ADAPT, we just have a little uh, blurb in each question about what the what should be included in that because some of these get rather uh, complicated like the drop down rationale uh, dyad or the drop down rationale triad these are completely new style questions faculty need to learn how they work and then um, give them as practice to their students um, for bow tie I have that one selected here because uh, up till April, it was very difficult to find practice bow tie questions to give to students to practice. And so we really focused a lot of time on getting those bow tie um, questions out there. So if you go to the next slide, here's a bow tie question. Now I'm also in the chat, I'm going to put a link to the OpenRN website if you don't already have it. Um, if you're interested in looking at this more closely, if you go to the OpenRN website, you can go to uh, see any of the books. So if you want to see these questions in action, we have several already embedded within the Nursing Pharmacology 2nd Edition and the Nursing uh, Skills 2nd Edition. So if you go to either of those books, if you click on... Uh, any of the chapters and then a subsection in each chapter is called learning activities at the bottom of that section will be these style questions we tried to include a bow tie in almost every style uh, in almost every chapter so students could practice the content using this so uh, if you like to do that i'll just talk through what a bow tie question is um, for those of you that aren't nursing faculty this might be something new uh, but this is something that's actually included um, outside of the case study. So students might get these questions in addition to the questions they get within the case studies. So um, there's three columns you can see by the different colors. They get a blurb kind of at the top. Nurses caring for a 62 year old patient. This is what's happening with him. Um, they'll have those case study notes um, like we talked about for the case studies. Typically, there's a, at least a few tabs that are associated with the bow tie questions. So they have additional information to look um, on the left side of the screen for that as well. Then they have to decide, okay, what do I think is going on with this patient? Um, so in the middle column, they have to select one condition they think that this patient is most likely experiencing. So then you can see the potential conditions here. Now on a true bow tie question um, provided by the NCSBN, these are drag and drop questions. But as Delmar and the programmers uh, talked with us, more, it's like due to federal accessibility requirements uh, with online learning activities, drag and drops aren't accessible for students using screen readers or other um, things. So what we did, we just to customize these questions for better accessibility, students click on the correct answer and it'll pop up into that box, which I'll show you on the next screen what it looks like. So that's the middle column. The column on the left, that now, if that's what the condition they think is happening with the student, they need to select two actions that they need to take um, based on that condition. So any of those you know, on the left, they can click and it'll pop up into the top where it says action to take. Then the right column, that gray column, after they've done these actions, what do they need to monitor to make sure this is working for the patient? Is it is the patient getting better? Are they getting worse? What do we need? How do we how do we know if that's happening? So they again click on two of those answers and those move up into the um, parameter monitor boxes. So if we go to the next screen, you can see now if they've selected their uh, choices, how that bumps up into those boxes. They still have a chance. They're not stuck <laughs> with their answers at this point. They can review, yes, this is what I want. And then they can click submit. Um, and when they click submit, they'll get the same type of um, feedback that we talked about before. Um, so if you go to the next screen, you can see the green check marks are things that have been correctly selected or correctly not selected. And that's how that partial credit gets added up um, based on their 
correct selections. Um, and how we've designed these, especially for the questions that we've included in all the textbooks, um, there's feedback, again, that goes back to the content within the textbook so they can get that immediate um, knowledge that they recognize they need uh, with that metacognition that Delmar talked about earlier. If they realize they don't quite understand a topic, they can go back and review until um, they have um, more information. So if we go to the next slide, um, here's some analytics. So uh, what we did, um, let me share a little bit more when I talk about this. So um, this software platform was customized. Um, it was released in April to coincide with the release of the next generation NCLEX. And then faculty from across the state received training um, either personally or in group sessions at their college on how to use ADAPT and create these style questions. And so we had, we've had over 29 case studies created through that process. And we also decided, if you think back to Delmar's, uh, one of his slides that said, you can also share these in textbooks. Uh, we said, hey, let's get these directly out there for students to be able to use as they read each chapter. And so that's where you'll see here on the analytics where it says open RN, nursing pharmacology, advanced skills, uh, nursing skills, mental health. Um, those are all textbooks that have already had these style questions um, included, as we talked about earlier. So you can see um, just within the textbooks, there's already been um, 3,775 submissions from the textbook links. And then the other examples you can see below are just some examples of faculty from um, that have taken questions from Next Generation, imported it into their own personal accounts, and then share that in their LMS. So there's passbook, uh, gradebook passbook going on. Um, and that's what those numbers referred to. So those questions are kept very, um, although they're public, they're shared only with instructors. So as Delmar mentioned, for instructors to get a personal account, they're verified that they're an instructor and then they're able to pull those questions down. So those examples where instructors are using it in their online courses, there, there's been 942 submissions. Um, by students that way. So we just uh, expect exponential growth now as we go through fall of 23 and spring of 23. Um, the next generation, um, the RN grant, next gen RN grant goes through June of um, 2024. So we'll continue to create these case studies um, and share them out with um, faculty that way. So if we go to the next slide. This is just a slide I shared about OpenRN. I know we're running out of time here for my part. Uh, I just want to put a blurb out there. I mentioned the books that the Next Generation Style Questions are in. We're also creating additional books right now. Um, we're creating a health alterations book uh, where we will use a lot of ADAPT case studies within that book. We're creating health promotions using the WTCS OER state funding. And we're creating a medical terminology second edition uh, book using uh, Department of Labor Edgestat grant. So lots of opportunities to use these questions within it. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Delmar, there's an example of um, what to do next. <laughs> so your next steps, if you're interested, is to go to adapt.libertext.org slash login. If you click on the contact us button at the top, you can request an instructor account and they're they're very fast at uh, approving that. Um, once you get your instructor account, then you can view any public questions that are out there, not just these nursing questions that we've talked about, um, but chemistry, math, other style questions um, that have been shared. Uh, for all the, the next generation style questions um, that we've created for both Next Gen Project and OpenRN, those all have CC by licensing. Um, so they're free and completely shared that way with Creative Commons licensing. Um, once you have a subscription um, to ADAPT, then you can import those publicly shared questions into your personal account and integrate them with your LMS. So um, that's our next step for the next gen uh, project we're going to be working on until June is getting more of the um, faculty to import those questions into their LMS. It just takes some LTI um, integration like Delmar talked about, but it's pretty simple um, from what I hear. So that is um, the end of our presentation. We have about 10 minutes left. So we wanted to open it up to any questions. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't see any in the chat right now. We had a lot of good mornings and welcomes. 
Um, but feel free if you want to unmute. Oh, we got one here. All right. As a librarian serving as liaison to my university's nursing program, would I be able to request an instructor access code? So would librarians or other support to an instructor? Yeah, just put a request down. I, I mentioned verified instructors. Uh, the, the, the real issue is to that we didn't want the corpus of questions to be available to students uh, because that, that violates or compromises the infrastructure that we have in place and it'll show up at Course Hero and Shag and other sources and start to def defeat part of the point of what we're doing. So we do have we do provide free accounts for instructors, instructional designers, librarians, and such, uh, all under the caveat that you're not going to take the content and then distribute it um, broadly um, outside of your own infrastructure. Good, thank you, Regina. Says makes sense. I saw a question that popped up on the screen briefly, asking about uh, the price point. Was that is that in the chat uh, screen? No. Um, it could be just to you too. Oh, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you're right welcome now. to address that. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I just saw it briefly, so I'm not entirely sure the full scope of the question. Um, the the issue with ADAPT uh, is that it, it actually costs a decent amount in order to maintain uh, because the infrastructure in place and all the different servers and uh, programming, things like that. Uh, so the approach that we have is, um, again, if you're out of the state of California, then if students have to pay for it, uh, then it's $15 per, uh, uh, per term uh, with a maximum of $30 per year. Um, so it will never go above that, irrespective of how many courses the student takes. Uh, if the campus pays for it, which is what we prefer, uh, uh, because it's logistically much easier, um, and plus it's in our line with our our mission, then it's twelve dollars. And if the campus decides to join our consortium, our LibreNet consortium, then it turns out to ten dollars, and then they get access to a wide range of other things. Um, but again, we're trying to operate at cost, um, but we still need to operate. We still need to have some level of sustainability uh, in order to make sure this uh, moves forward. I think that was a question that uh, Katie mentioned there that popped up. I'm not sure that came publicly or just came to me. Did I answer your question, Katie? I see in the chat, she, uh, this I think came after your explanation, Delmar. What aspects of ADAPT require a paid subscription and what aspects would be free, such as a LibreText site? Um. Using ADAPT as a question bank is free for all non-students. Um, uh, so you can be able to peruse the questions, review them, use them as subject to the licensing on each question. Most of them are Creative Commons licensed. Using ADAPT as a homework platform where students sign in, do their work, upload the, the scores to the grade book, and then passing back to learning management system and all the, the complexities behind that uh, is where uh, we require some financial aspects. That's a great question too, if there's any nursing, WTCS nursing faculty in the audience, because right now the next gen RN grant project is paying for um, access through June, um, 2024. So just to reinforce what Delmar said, after uh, June 30th of 2024, anyone can still view the questions, um, but to have that grade book um, pass back with your LMS, um, that would be when the subscription would come into play. Oh, Kim, that was what I was gonna ask. Do we have, do you know if we have current WTCS nursing faculty who are using it? Yes. Okay, yeah. and if they had good good feedback? We've had good feedback from students. Um, we, we have a survey attached to the first um, few courses that we're piloting it late in spring of 2023. And students just, you know, any type of uh, practice question like this where they feel more comfortable about what they'll be seeing on their um, NCLEX, they find very helpful. So yeah, we've had, there were, like as I mentioned, there were 29 case studies created um, by probably, I don't have the exact number of instructors that participated, but there were several colleges that participated in that process. So um, if they're interested in uh, continuing that after June, then that would be a discussion to have with um, 
their administration. Or perhaps, you know, who knows, with the WTCS OER funding, what, what magic might be able to happen there, too. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> One thing that I don't know much about, and Kim can certainly uh, help out here, uh, is that, you know, at least the bow tie, and I presume other question types that were introduced here for nursing, uh, have pedagogical utility outside of nursing. Uh, so you can, um, depending upon the nature of the question, like case studies, for example, can be used in a wide range of different uh, fields from law to business to even some levels of chemistry, depending upon how you, you formulate it. Um, the bow tie, uh, if you have the right uh, infrastructure, the right type of question uh, in your field that's outside of nursing could also be quite applicable. And as I understand it, they're actually proper learning uh, research in order to argue that that bow tie is a, um, a good method in order to be able to address that versus traditional multiple choice based questions. But again, I pre presume Kim knows more about that than I do. For it to be on the, on the, the NCLEX, I'm sure it's been thoroughly researched in terms of its validity. Um, but now's a good time to plug your next generation or your next uh, presentation. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm presenting a, a more extensive uh, discussion uh, around ADAPT in an hour and 15 minutes um, at this conference. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the, the code is off of, but you can find it in the agenda. Uh, so if you're interested in learning uh, a lot more about ADAPT um, than the just topical overview I gave here, please uh, uh, feel free to uh, join. And one more time, if you go one more slide, it'll have our your. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. There you go. Your links. Yeah. So feel to, feel feel free to reach out too via the Open RN website if you have any follow up questions um, after the presentation. All right. Any last questions? I'm getting some things in the chat. Great presentation, informative. All right, I am not seeing any, but yeah, definitely. Thank you. You guys are doing some spectacular work. Thank you. I think we're very happy with what we're doing here. It's really, um, been even better than what I anticipated. The the collaboration, um, again, just like with the other open arm materials, faculty really appreciate the collaboration um, because we're all teaching, right, according to the state curriculum. So it's nice to have these resources. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm going to stop the recording here. All right.